Another of the Oxford researchers looked beyond Lucozade at the general body of research on sports drinks. Again, he says good studies were rare, but the best one he found on marathon runners had a surprising conclusion. There was a well-conducted study where they gave 50 runners sports drinks, the other 50 runners had water, and they looked at their performance through the marathon. And that showed no significant benefit of the sports drink on speed of finishing the marathon, which is an outcome that the marathon runner would probably be interested in. What do the experts who study nothing but sports performance make of the Oxford findings? I'm going to the place where sports drinks began, way back in the 1930s. The first ever sports drink was created here in South Africa by an ultramarathon runner. And it turns out, 90 years on, that the biggest critic of these drinks is also based here. So I'm going to meet him. For more than 30 years, Professor Tim Noakes has been researching what sports people should drink. He's carried out dozens of studies on athletes of all ability levels to try to establish the perfect fluid balance. What we find is that there is a direct relationship to how much you drink and your performance. If you don't drink at all, your performance is definitely impaired. But interestingly, if you drink too much, your performance is also impaired. So it's important to get the fluid balance right. Drink, but not too much if you want to be your best. But what should we drink? Water? Or do we need a specially formulated sports drink? There's enough that you have to just push through pain all the time. British Olympic hopeful Jessica Ennis is a heptathlon gold medalist. She drinks Powerade. Powerade, Ion 4, hydrates better than water by replenishing fuel and minerals. Sports drinks like Powerade contain electrolytes and carbohydrates. That's salt and sugar to you and me. So during exercise, does this mix really give them the edge on water, like the adverts claim? We've shown that the amount of electrolytes present makes no impact on performance. However, carbohydrates do definitely make an effect. But the effect often takes a long time to show, so that one has to cycle for two or three hours to show an effect. One lap to go, 250 metres, separating Graham O'Brien from his finest moment. Graham O'Brien is a man who's pushed his own performance to the limit. The Flying Scotsman came from nowhere in the 90s with his handmade bike to smash first the world hour record and then the 4,000 metres pursuit. He's since broken two more world records, fuelled by his own special combination of fluid and carbs. Tonight, exclusively on Panorama, he's agreed to share his recipe. One, bread. Two, jam. So, and what you do is you get an application device, and what you do is this. You actually scoop the jam onto the sandwich, spread it in an even manner, he doesn't use sports drinks. His energy booster, nothing more sophisticated than a jam sandwich and plain old-fashioned water. The jam provides basically sugar, very short chain carbohydrate. Now, long chain carbohydrate, the bread part is loads of sugars joined together. So it's got the quick rush of the sugar, but the long bit that it can break down enzymatically as it needs that energy. You actually broke the records just using that? Well, that's what I did. That and water. Graham Obrey rejects sports drinks, but they have been shown to give endurance athletes a boost after hours of exercise, when the sugar stored as glycogen in muscles runs out. But what about the rest of us? Tim Noakes says that's where the evidence fades away. Drinks companies rarely study the ordinary gym goer or jogger. They do laboratory studies of highly adapted athletes who are good athletes who can sustain exercise at high intensity for relatively prolonged periods. In that group, it does work. They don't never go and study a person who trains two hours a week and walks most of the marathon, which is the major users of sports drinks. But Coca-Cola Great Britain, who make Powerade, deny this. They told us... 
The vast majority of studies are undertaken using recreational active individuals rather than top athletes. Powerade Ion 4 was developed in collaboration with sports science experts and in full accordance with European regulatory guidelines. It's aimed at individuals taking part in intense physical exercise defined as high intensity for more than 30 minutes or for more than 60 minutes at any intensity. The European Food Safety Authority takes a different view of who sports drinks should be aimed at. They recently examined more than 100 claims by the makers of sports drinks and supplements. They approved just six. ESA was persuaded that sports drinks can help maintain high-intensity exercise that lasts for more than an hour. If sports drinks are only really beneficial for hardcore endurance exercise, you might expect to find them in specialist shops. But no, they're here in supermarkets alongside fruit juices and other soft drinks. Clever marketing means we spent more than a quarter of a billion pounds on sports drinks last year. So it can't only be endurance athletes who are buying them despite the recent decision by EFSA. It's the endurance sports people, the, the people involved in endurance events, who would be the target for these claims. But how are they the target if these drinks are sold in supermarkets? Well, that's a matter for the manufacturers to deal with. But, uh, but it is quite important because yes. they, they are sold alongside soft drinks. Yes, but the information that will be on these products when these claims uh, that are now permitted, uh, when they carry these claims, will make it quite explicit uh, for which benefit they are intended. So will tightening the claim on the label narrow the market for sports drinks, or might it actually encourage more of us to buy them? There's a tiny niche market for these products, and they certainly do not need to be used by the mass market of people who are currently using them. Powerade in a gear, sports kit for your insides. The sadness is people think because I'm an athlete I must not take the sports drink, when in fact if they avoided the sports drink they'd get thinner and run faster. An after school kickabout in South London and even these eight year olds have got sports drinks. I like to drink Lucas Age Cherry. Yeah, why? Uh, because I don't really see the difference, but it must work because all the um, professionals use it. All the good ones drink it. Power and others like that. So do you think it's something if you want to be a good footballer you should drink? Yeah, because then um, it gives you a boost. Power Aid contains essential nutrients to provide fast and effective hydration. These drinks may boost top footballers, but how healthy are they for children? The labels do list the high level of carbohydrates contained within these drinks, but some of them are less forthright about the fact that that means sugar and lots of it. So this single bottle of LucasAid Sport contains the equivalent in calories of eight teaspoons of sugar. One of those bottles of LucasAid Sport, how much would you think was in? How many teaspoons? Uh, five. Eight. Eight. See, that's an awful lot of sugar, isn't it? I would say six teaspoons at least, probably. It's eight. Eight. Oh, <laughs> that's even worse then. And they're bound to drink the whole thing within, within a session, so that's an awful lot of sugar. Do children who are exercising benefit from a sugar boost like this? Most parents are wise to the sugar rush that you can get from fizzy drinks and, yeah. and sweets, but they might imagine a sports drink's healthier than that. Well, if they do think that, they'd be wrong. These drinks contain an awful lot of sugar, about one-third, if not slightly more than one-third of a child's daily required amount of sugar. The speed that this sugar is taken up means that it's actually not good for child's energy requirements. If you want to give your child energy, give them something like a banana. If you want to give them hydrated, give them water. The makers of LucasAid Sport, GSK, told us they label contents clearly and that the sugar comparison is misleading. The 32 grams of total carbohydrate content 
shouldn't be confused with the sugar people use to sweeten food and drink. It is a mix of different carbohydrates, the levels of which are designed specifically to replenish our fuel reserves during and after exercise, which can be a major cause of fatigue. It is not included as a sweetener or to improve taste. We do not promote Lucozaid sport to children under 16. One of the GPs on the Oxford team is worried about the public health impact of making sports drinks more appealing. I've seen myself in my surgery, children, young people getting more obese and more obese. And this particular claim of drinks being good for you is very, very worrying because it just could completely counteract young people exercising more, playing football more, going to the gym more. Hang on though, the industry has an answer for the sugar question. Buy an artificially sweetened drink instead. Coca-Cola Great Britain told Panorama that Powerade Zero is designed for light workouts, like a 45-minute run, and is... The first zero-sugar, calorie-free fitness drink, enhanced with sodium that hydrates the body, without adding back the calories. But what's the point of a sugar-free sports drink? How does a low-calorie sports drink uh, give us more energy? <laughs> What in diet drinks is supposed to give us more energy? Well, the very presence of low-calorie sports drinks kind of disproves the value of sports drinks. You either get the energy from the carbohydrates or you don't. Coca-Cola Great Britain says Powerade Zero hydrates. But then so does water, and you can get that free from the tap. 